It's Nolan. What's going on, y'all? It's the kid, Jay Nolan here. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music and entertainment breakdowns and commentary. We're about to we're about to have another Let's Talk session, and we got a lot to talk about, man. I don't want to be on here all night, so let's just jump into it, okay? First up, we have King Combs, a.k.a. Christian, or however you want to put his name. Um, seems like the apple is not falling far from the tree. I don't know if the apples are falling at all, okay? Apparently... He is now under investigation, or at least he is now the subject of a new lawsuit accusing him of drugging and assaulting a Jane Doe woman. And when we talk about assaulting, you know that we're talking about S.A., OK, <clears throat> let's jump right in. A lawsuit implicates Christian Combs in serious allegations amidst his father Diddy's ongoing legal and public relations nightmares. Christian King Combs, son of music mogul Sean Diddy Combs, again. He's in some drama. Unfortunately, we got to bring Tyrone Blackburn into the fold because he is the guy that's basically taking aim at Diddy and now his entire family. Right. So he's known for taking high profile cases against celebrities. He has revealed his intentions to file a lawsuit implicating Christian in a grave matter. OK, as we know, the lawyer's client, Rodney Lil Rod Jones, already has legal sites on Diddy with claims of monumental proportions claiming trafficking gun running drug dealing and other wild allegations okay compounding the issue is a new jane doe who plans to file a lawsuit claiming she was sa by christian right as of now the specifics uh remain under wraps but blackburn ass asserts that it involves drugging and assaulting a woman sexually whose identity has yet to be disclosed It's a crazy way to celebrate his birthday today. And he has a girlfriend who he was recently posted up with after Diddy's house got raided the other day. It's going to be very interesting to see how this proceeds. I'm not saying he's guilty. All I'm saying is. It's looking a little funny in the light, y'all. We already have the other brother. um, Justin, who allegedly was there for a shooting in the studio with his father. Some uh, guy named G, I believe his name was, got shot in the abdomen area, bled out in the studio. Him and his dad ran off into another area in the studio. Cops ended up showing up. Somehow they ended up seeing all of the blood and guts all over the bathroom floor and just left the scene as it was. As a matter of fact, it took two days before that bathroom was even cleaned up, according to Lil Rod. And he showed how the stories have come out and been disseminated in the news that somebody was shot on the same street as the studio rather than being shot inside the studio, basically lending to the fact that Diddy and his counterparts have some sort of connection to the LAPD or someone close is able to influence not only the LAPD, but the actual articles and journalism that's circulating around these issues, right? Basically, Stating that Diddy laid it out for him. Hey, <laughs> we got the we got the the cops on lock. We got the news on lock. So go bad with me, nigga. All types of shit can happen. You know what I mean? Now, circling back on Diddy, new information has been released today. Allegedly, Cassie is now willing to work and cooperate with the feds. Remember. She is the one who jump started all of this. Just in November, she put a lawsuit out saying she needed some money for everything that she went through. Diddy sent the motherfucking wire or Diddy's insurance sent the motherfucking wire within 24 hours. From there, everything was good. Cassie went back to living her life, doing whatever she wanted to do. She hasn't even come out and publicly spoke about the issue. Now, according to TMZ, they're saying that Cassie is willing to cooperate with the feds in this case. Okay. A source exclusively told them that she will be one of the witnesses against Diddy. They claim she has reportedly been working with investigators for a few weeks now. Based on the timing, the source says Cassie may have allegedly said had something to do with those raids in Diddy's homes. However, no official information is known about what intel she's letting them know. But it's safe to assume that this is in correlation with her lawsuit against Diddy. 
that accused him of essay abuse and trafficking. There are also a number of other women listed as witnesses in the case. However, their identities to this point are remaining undisclosed. Mm, mm, mm. So, you know, we were just talking last night about this Tyrone Blackburn character um, and how they're trying to paint him out to be some sleaze ball ambulance chaser or something of the like trying to gain clout off the music industry. I would not say the same about Cassie and whoever her legal representation is, they've been on the ball. So if she's joining in on Lil Rod's case, she's cooperating and there's numerous other women that are willing to cooperate. I don't know, man. I think this nigga might go down. Now I'm not here to say that's what was going to happen. I am not Nostradamus. I am nobody. I'm not a psychic. I don't got no crystal ball for you motherfuckers, man. I'm just saying what it sounds like. Cause if she start, she starts singing and she already got paid off. That's a whole nother song. That's a different type of hit record. Y'all going to have to, Hey man, protect Cassie at all costs. Now that this information is coming out, she is in jeopardy. Tighten up the security, get the snipers sniper. No sniping. All right. Cause, uh, yeah, yeah. We're going to need to hear that testimony. And I hope she don't come out and be like, that's some other effing lie. Like, uh, Ethiopia did yesterday. Cause that would be, that would shoot a lot of holes into the, uh, credibility of the story. We're not going to harp on that for too long. I just wanted to update y'all on that in particular. We're going to move on since this is a let's talk session. We're going to go through a few different things today. Um, what else we have on the docket is uh, Doja Cat's album has been leaked. I just told y'all about her new single that's supposed to be dropping. Uh, I believe that the uh, deluxe version of her album, Scarlet Scarlet 2, was supposed to be dropping Friday. However, leakers have beat her to the punch. The entire project, which features, what is it, seven or eight new songs? New songs have been leaked online. People are enjoying it, listening to it right now as I speak. I have not heard it yet, but I have heard a couple snippets. Ain't gonna lie to y'all, the snippets do sound good. From what I heard on them, I wish they would have been on the original. You know what I'm saying? Now, Doja Cat's fans have come out and they're pretty outraged. And they are expecting her to feel the same, but Doja's like, I don't give a fuck. I think she's gotten completely detached from the music industry. I think she cares about the music, but I don't think she cares about anything else in tandem with it. I don't necessarily blame her. She's been through a lot. A lot of people like to talk shit about her. They say, oh, uh, you know, she uses the fans. You know, some people feel like she has used light skin, her proximity to whiteness to her advantage, whatever it may be. I'm just going to say, man, I feel like she's been through it. Some things have been um, self-inflicted. Some things have been a little extra, you know. Um, I think she's been through a lot that we haven't seen, especially when she lost all that weight. Some people would say it was due to cocaine. I will not. Um, but I do know she said that she was training very rigorously. She was not allowed to take days off. She was on tour for like a year and some change straight back-to-back -back shows, eating poorly. A lot of people don't talk about how that has an effect on you. We recently heard Drake last year come out and talk about how he had stomach issues out on the road and he was supposed to take some time off. But basically, due to that deal that he signed over $400 million allegedly with Universal, they said, hey, nigga, <laughs> get you some Pepto-Bismol. Whatever it is you need, nigga, get your ass back on that road. We paid you too much money. We already got a plan set aside for you. <laughs> you ain't going to come to us with no motherfucking tummy ache thinking you finna take no time off. Apparently, um, Doja was going through some of the same because she lost a lot of weight. She changed her look. She was She's much smaller than we remember her from when she first came out. People have criticized her for that they've criticized her for the way her hair looks she cut her hair she does some things to you know fight back she goes back and forth with the fans etc but again just 
internalizing this on a personal level, she been through a lot. And I think she's like, man, I just want to make music, put that shit out. I don't give a fuck if you like it. I don't care if you don't. I don't care if you leak it. I don't care if the label's mad. The label could suck my, too, because I don't fuck with y'all neither. Right? Especially with the fact that she said that those first couple albums on RCA were just uh, cash grab albums and y'all love that pop friendly stuff. She doesn't even want to make the pop friendly music no more. So seems to me she's doing everything she can to get dropped by the label and go back to some sort of normalcy. I think she wants to be an independent artist again and drop music when she wants cater to the fans that really fuck with her the long and strong way. But I don't know how many more albums she has in that contract. We'll get to some more contract talk in a little bit. But again, her fans were outraged. Doja Cat came out earlier today. She says, what does it mean when someone leaks an album? Why do people get upset? One of her fans came out and said, because you lose streams. Doja says, but I don't care. Someone else came out and said, you definitely do. She says, wait, why? Come back. I mean, it's low-key disrespectful if you set a date and people are dropping it early without permission. She responds. No, it's definitely messed up because I wanted to put it out myself, but there's nothing I can do about it. That's just how it's going to be. But at least I can just keep being creative and look forward to the awesome things I have coming up. She's keeping a glass half full perspective. Someone else comes out. Thought you would be cussing out people having a breakdown or something. She says, LMAO, nah. Someone else comes out and projects. They say, feel like you're mad. You're just pretending. She says, I'm not. I swear I already leaked my own stuff anyway. Furthermore, somebody says, your whole album leak. Ma, please do something about it. She says, I don't know why you guys care so much about leaks. Someone says the album will still be a hit. I know that's right, mother. She says, why does that matter, though? So she doesn't give a fuck about the success of the project, neither. <laughs> um, yeah. Someone says, so you don't care that I'm listening to Urge for the 15th time today? She says, do what you want. It's literally your life. <laughs> someone says, someone else says, we need the stream. She says, who is we and why? Like, <laughs> don't put yourself in my situation, motherfucker. I don't care about the streams and I don't care if the label's looking for the streams. Continue to enjoy it. I'm on my way out anyway. Uh, Dr. TT comes out and says, wait, wasn't you the one saying you guys will never get boom so you can learn to stop leaking my stuff? She says, I definitely could have said that, but I'm not the same now. Again, I'm telling y'all, she don't give two fucks about none of this shit. She wants to be independent and I don't blame her because uh, it's just a lot that comes with being signed. A lot of people don't get all into that. You don't get really paid as an artist. We've gone over that numerous times on the channel. We just we just had Offset on Club Shay Shay talking about that and how you can easily take an upfront payment and never get nothing else off your deal and your publishing and all of that different type of stuff. I think the sooner she can get out of that deal, the sooner she can actually start making money for herself and doing it a better way because she's got she's a household name now. If she came out with an independent project tomorrow. That motherfucker is going to be way more successful than the average independent artist. It's still going to be on par with what she would do on a major label because she has so much cultural cachet. She has so much history in the industry already with just topping the pops, uh, being a controversial figure, somebody that people are going to continue to talk about anyway. So I don't like I said, I don't know what how, how much of an obligation she still owes to the label if she's got one, two, three more projects on the on the uh, paper. But I hope she can get the fuck up out of it. Speaking of which, um, French Montana comes out and he says that artists are brainwashed to chase streaming numbers but aren't getting paid for it. So this keeps in line with what we're talking about with Doja. Let's hear what French had to say. I know y'all probably don't like him. I'm not the biggest French fan, but when he's right, he's right. They really fucked us up and brainwashed us because, like, you know, like, every, every, like, every year everybody start popping out with these Spotify numbers. Right. Everybody be like, look how much I did a year. You know what I'm saying? Those Spotify numbers when everybody put them shits up, it's almost like it's almost like you hustling on the block. And you take the nigga that gave you the G pack or gave you whatever work, right? Mm -hmm. Then you throwing it up on your page like it's yours, right? Not knowing that like five percent of that is yours. You know what I'm saying? So they got all of us chasing that. 
and not even knowing that we just showing stacks that don't even belong to us, that belong to the label. And we all brainwashed who's gonna have the biggest numbers. It's taking the love out of music. People are not making the music that they love no more. People are chasing those numbers. And how you chase those numbers? You go to rap life, you go to rap caviar, you go to whatever it is. This is what the best song sound like. I gotta make a song that sound just like that. French makes very good points. <laughs> He says, it's like hustling on the block. I want to simplify it even past hustling on the block because not everybody did that. Just imagine you going to the club and you wearing your homeboy chain. You know what I'm saying? That's what we looking like out here. That's what the that's what the rap game is looking like. Everybody's going to the club wearing their homeboy chain. Somebody in the crew got the money for the bottles and all of the refreshments. You are acting, you, you in the club me mugging and shoulder shrugging like you the one spending the money you even looking at other motherfuckers that ain't got no bottles ain't got no section you looking at them like they broke and you ain't even put the money up for the shit you partaking in that's what rap is today you know what i'm saying and you're not getting no return on your investment that's what's going on okay in other music news i want to get to miss glorilla she made a stop up there at Club Shay Shay and had a few things to say. Uh, she addressed the so-called issue with Kai Sana. She laid it to rest. She said that that wasn't real. When she blocked him, let's hear what she had to say. They, again, they go over a few different things. Um, she talked about shooting her shot at Damian Lillard. And she also spoke about her personal Mount Rushmore of rappers. Of course, there's much more to be heard in the interview. Club Shay Shay, you know, they go at least an hour, sometimes more, two hours. But we're just going to go over a few clips that have uh, been put online. That you don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't bother you nearly as much as the criticism from someone you do know. Like like DJ Academics says some things. Uh, uh, Kassanat says some things. Even You even blocked them. Mm -hmm. you un did you unblock them? Yeah, that was a whole joke. That was a joke. That okay. was that one serious okay. stuff. Like, and that's another thing. People don't understand that I play too much. And I don't understand that people don't know me and don't know that I play too much. God, they don't know you, Glow. Exactly. And I hate to realize <laughs> that because all my people, they didn't even call me once they saw me trolling. They didn't even call me like, oh, my God, what's going on? They right. know I play like this. Right. I just play too much. Right. Yeah, I just be playing. Oh, so that's what that's what you do. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're playing. So for that, for what I gather from that, I feel like Glow is giving y'all a little bit of a sneak peek into, you know, behind the curtain. Sometimes we see a lot of these things that make news and these issues, these so-called beefs that become chatter, become subjects, become topics of discussion, even for myself. We may think it's real. We may think it's genuine. We may think people be mad behind the scenes, the Twitter fingers, blah, blah, blah. She just told y'all that wasn't even real. She came out and told him he was blocked. Stay stay over there with it. Don't try to come back. Don't be trying to circle the block. Keep that same energy. Blah, blah, blah. Kai Sanat went on his stream. Damn, Glow blocked me. What the... F you know what I'm saying? For her to only come out and say, ah, that wasn't real. That was a joke. To be honest, that whole thing could have been a full publicity stunt orchestrated behind the scenes. Maybe not scripted. Maybe he said what he said and went a little far, you know, Maybe she didn't tell him exactly what to say. Just be like, yeah, just trash me one good time. You know what I'm saying? Because that's, that negativity goes even further. Like, you would think folks don't do shit like that. But if you think somebody's cosign can go viral, just imagine how viral you would go. Or just imagine how viral people go on a day-to-day -day basis for saying something negative about somebody. And it just brings even more attention to the, to the issue at hand. So I think that that is very possible. That was a fully orchestrated label check and he was out here talking about my opinion can't be bought i think his opinion was bought that day with her saying that just being honest no shots to him get your bag my nigga furthermore she talks about shooting her shot at damian lillard i thought this was interesting as well um dame lillard is single now too by the way and he said that he's been lonely and bored out there in milwaukee so I don't know. I'm not I don't know if uh <laughs> if the hot girl summer tour stopped through there. But uh Glow might have something for you to do, bro. Anyway, let's move forward. You shots like Steph Curry cause you shot one from the raft to talk about hey, <laughs> hey who 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 in is this right here? 
I don't even get, I don't, I don't even care because she can't whip me. So you. <laughs> he said whip. <laughs> you know what you said. <laughs> I know you whip. I know what you said, but I can't say that. I can't say that, Glow. <laughs> I mean, but you shot with the most Steph Curry shot. Did it go in? The half court shot? Yeah, it go in. You know, at the end of the day, the day gone in. Okay. I will leave it at that. Mm hmm. Cause he said no comment. You said, hey, at the end of the day, the end of the day. At the end of the day, the day gone in. It went in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually go watch the rest of this interview. I didn't, I haven't seen it yet. I just seen the clips that have come out so far. I like this interaction between Shannon Sharp and Glorilla. Like, they having a good ass time. It's two country motherfuckers just going back and forth shooting this shit. I like to see this. This is good, wholesome content. That I like to see. I don't know about it. It ain't completely wholesome. But it feel wholesome to me. You know what I'm saying? Shannon Sharp. I think he's from Savannah, Georgia. He's from down yonder. You know what I'm saying? In Memphis. Memphis with uh, Glorilla. This like two. It's like your aunt and your uncle shooting the shit. You know what I mean? I like to see this. Um, Again. Dame said no comment. She said at the end of the day. The day go in. What y'all going to do at the end of the day? Because I, I just told you. Dame needs something to do. And I ain't, I'm, I'm, I ain't going to hold you. Um, you know, it ain't all about looks, but I would say Glow really looked better than his ex-wife. I'm just saying. She country and glow country than a motherfucker. I ain't gonna lie about that part. But Glow look a lot more interesting than the ex-wife to be to be real too, you know what I mean? That's just me, though. Y'all might, some people might favor her because she was of a lighter skin tone, but yeah. Go ahead and snatch that up, dang. Shit. I know you out there having, <laughs> you <laughs> you need something to occupy outside of hitting them half-court shots and them quarter-court shots, my nigga. It's right there for you. She country in a motherfucker, but you can lock it down, man. Might have her turning a whole new leaf for the new year. <laughs> Oh man, speaking of divorced people, we now have Chance the Rapper. His wife comes out and lets it be known that they are no more. Wasn't expecting that today, but I did see that coming from a mile away. Uh, remember last year, Chance went out to Jamaica, I believe it was, and had the time of his life. He was out there living his life like it's golden. And um, he went viral. He was having a good ass time. You know what I mean? And People were trying to understand, like, hey, ain't this a married man having and yucking it up with all these females, getting wined on, getting twerked on and shit? This nigga acting like he was just let out the house for the first time from a prison cell. I don't know if he was already single when he took that trip, that excursion. That might have been his first day out on some uh goddamn on some goddamn uh T Grizzly type vibes. You know what I'm saying? Like shit, but I ain't been free in a long like <laughs> I haven't had a good time in a long time, you know. I like on some shit like that. <laughs> Cause you know, around the time right before Chance got married, man, he 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 jumped into being like an a, a devout Christian. And I always looked at that with a specific set of eyes. Cause I went through that phase too in my early twenties. I went and I, I I was like reading the Bible like word for word, page for page, day for day. I had this goal of reading the entire Bible. I never made it all the way to the end, but I got I got deep into it. At least over half, you know. I was praying multiple times a day. I was I was trying to be the the perfect Christ-like person, you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna tell y'all, man, when I went into that, I became the loneliest dude on earth, you know what I'm saying? Not on no romantic shit neither. It was just like Lonely because as you go further into the Bible and you really want to adhere to these standards and these um, these rules and guidelines and whatnot, not wanting to sin and wanting to, you know, live as God would see fit. Everything that's been put in front of you, like begins to disappear, like the life that you had grown accustomed to living just goes out the door. You know, what I mean, there's some people that. Try to find balance. You know, you got the Kirk Franklins of the world who take some liberties in certain areas and 
talk about redemption and all of that type of stuff. But then you also got the Christian people who will criticize you every chance that they get. And I didn't want none of that. So I wanted to do it right, quote unquote. But, you know, that affected my music. I started making um, more Christian based hip hop, speaking about God, speaking about Christ, speaking about righteousness and all of this different type of stuff. And it was kind of interesting because a good friend of mine was trying to introduce me to people within that space. And they're looking at me like, why are you hanging with him? What you doing with that guy? Why is he making Christian hip hop? He's not a Christian rapper, blah, blah, blah. Where he come from? Ain't no, he ain't got, who can vouch for him? Who can vouch for his walk? He was like, shit, boy, that nigga walk is more, more sturdy than yours if we being honest, but uh, thanks for asking. So even going into, trying to go into that field while still being hip hop or whatever, I was, the doors wasn't opening. You get what I'm saying? So it was like, I was, I felt shunned from the rest of the world because I had taken on this undertaking. It was my personal choice. But then as I tried to find um, my people within this tribe, and I use that term loosely, um, it was like I wasn't even being accepted in that space because it's like, oh, nah, he didn't come through the traditional way of becoming a Christian rapper. He's not affiliated with one of the big churches that, you know, the labels are filtering through or you know, you never went to none of these youth camps and stuff like that when you was a jit and all this different type of stuff. So when I seen it and I went through that at a certain point, I was like, you know what, man, I got to I, I, I believe in God. I believe in righteousness. I believe in, you know, prayer. I'm not a bad person. I don't do anything to hurt nobody. I'm going to live by that moral compass. You know what I'm saying? And when I fall short, I ask for forgiveness. Right. That's where I've been since then. And I made my mosey my way back into making what the fuck music I wanted to do, talking how the fuck I wanted to talk because I'm being myself. I'm being authentic. I'm being genuinely who God created me to be. He made no mistakes. That's what they say. So me being exactly who I am is no mistake. I am not an abomination. So as I came out of that phase, I saw that Chance the Rapper was slowly going into it. And I said, oof. This is going to be it's going to last for a little bit because he wants to do the right thing. He's trying to get married. I don't know if he's getting married for the right reasons or if this is something that he genuinely wanted or if he was trying to go by the book. Right. But I was like, man, when he comes out of that, he going to go back into a ratchet phase because he was the life of the party before that nigga was young. When he got married, he was just coming out of the teen clubs and shit like that. Juking out there in Chicago. Um you know, the project that blew him up was acid rap. So he was taking drugs and all of this different shit, which I was happy to see him evolve and grow up and become more mature. But I knew making that quick of a transition, you're skipping some steps in personal growth. You're skipping the actual maturity phase and jumping into it because you feel like you have to. And when you make that move, if you ever come out on the other side, you're going to be trying to make up for some lost time. And that's what I saw him doing on that Jamaica trip. So again, I don't know if he was single when he took that trip or if that was the straw that broke the camel's back. And she says, I'm not doing this shit no more. You, you out here embarrassing me with all these people. So today chances, um, partner, Miss Kirsten Corley has publicly let us know that they're calling it quits. She goes into her story. She says, after a period of separation, the two of us have arrived at the decision to part ways. We came to this decision amicably and with gratitude for the time we spent together. God has blessed us with two beautiful daughters who will continue to raise together. We kindly ask for privacy and respect as we navigate this transition. Thank you, Chance and Kirsten. I don't know if Chance put this in his story, but we know that Kirsten did think it's very interesting that you come out on a public platform and ask for privacy when we never needed to know that y'all were going through this anyway chance as much of a celebrity as he may be he is not prime time like that to where niggas needed a public announcement that y'all were separating the only good that this does is to let us know 
The next time we see Chance, if he fucking with some females, y'all know that's not my nigga no more. That's that's what it sound like to me. Like, in case y'all see him canoodling and gallivanting with some new hoes, just understand I'm out of the picture. Okay? Don't call me about this nigga. Don't text me about this nigga. Don't DM me about this nigga because he ain't mine no more. And she put that motherfucking message out there talking about Chance and Kirsten like it was written by both of them. It could have been, but the intention is crystal clear to me. Okay. That nigga was out there trying to, trying to bruck up on some boom, boom. Found himself in a predicament. (laughs) I ain't laughing at you, Chance. I'm laughing with you, brother, because I know you getting the last laugh right now until she get to start getting her payments. You know what I mean? Jesus, I just wish the best for the family and the kids. So that's what we got on Chance. Who else we got on the docket for today? Rapper Rod Wave found himself in a precarious situation. He's been arrested for possession of a firearm. Um, So he's in a jail cell this week after the cops arrested him on a firearms charge, even though his attorneys are calling BS. The rapper was booked into Manatee County Jail Wednesday on two counts of possession of firearm by a convicted felon, and he posed for a mugshot on his way. The exact circumstances are still unclear. His attorneys, Bradford Corn and Mark Rankin, say the officers that made the arrest were incorrect. He is not a convicted felon and has never been a convicted felon. We would have hoped additional research would have been done prior to them filing these charges. They add, as with any case, we will hold those parties that made the error accountable for their actions. Okay. Since then, Rod has been released on his own recognizance. However, according to jail records, he's still being listed as in custody. Interesting. He has had some legal trouble before a couple years back. He was facing a domestic violence case in Florida, but in the end, the battery charges were dropped. Okay. So on paper, his attorneys appear to be correct. Um, and there doesn't seem to be any previous conviction against him. So best wishes for him and all involved. Okay. I don't know who he's trying to protect himself from, but you know, sometimes you got to ride with that shit, man. Get your shit registered. Make sure you're good. Cause you shouldn't be getting arrested for possession of a firearm. If the shit is yours and it's legal. Fuck going on. Okay. We've got rapper Joyner Lucas coming out and he exposes that record labels are shams. While he was being courted to Atlantic Records back in 2016, he was promised features from Cardi B, Bruno Mars and Ed Sheeran. These were not promises from the artist. These were promises from the label when they were courting him, trying to get him to sign on the dotted lines. He recently went on Math Hoffa's My Expert Opinion with his long-term business partner, Drew, a.k.a. Anonymous Innovator. We've had a couple conversations on on, uh, Instagram before. Shout out to him. And uh, they basically recall the entire situation. They also claim that it took forever for them to get paid. And, man, he had a rough shake during his time at Atlantic. They, They came out and let it be known for real. Like when he went on tour, some of the other shit that was going on. I couldn't even believe it. I thought he was doing so much better. I mean, he's doing great now. He's a multimillionaire. But I thought he was a millionaire when he signed to Atlantic. They did a million dollar deal, but his advance was only 100K. He said he took a piece of that and gave the other half to his mother so she could retire after taxes. You know, after taxes, he gave his mom half, told her to quit her job because he thought he was finna be rich and famous immediately. And uh, things didn't play out that way, man. It was kind of crazy. We're going to play some of what he had to say. Give us a moment. So now we're working together. Now I'm speaking to him every day. I'm speaking to the business partner, who's the guy who's the label, the indie label. And I'm speaking with Joyner. And just to be clear, you're going to hear his business partner speaking a lot because Joyner had to sign NDAs with his former manager and former label. So there's certain details of his deal or certain inner workings of said contract that he personally can't speak on, but his manager can. So right now we're listening to Drew. We're working. We go into label meetings. 
Now you know how the label meeting go. You sit down, round table, they tell you how they like your shit, everyone puts offers together, whatever, mm -hmm. right? So we're going into meetings. We take meeting with pretty much every label at this point. Primarily and was like every label, like like a lot of them. Like we, we went into different rooms, a bunch of different rooms. This is twenty sixteen. Warner know, Sony, any yeah, label that came under them. So you got Warner, you got Atlantic underneath them, you got right, so Universal, any label in the runnings, right? Right. So we take Who sure showed the most interest? Uh well we take a few they all interested, bro, because they're sitting by a table and they're like Hey, we've heard your music. They're taking a meeting. They want to sign I, 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 <laughs> you. Know I want this information Atlantic. for all the artists that, that have, right, have bro, listen. shopped to these labels. Every artist, every artist that's going to sit there right. is going to fucking be at a round table and they're going to tell you how they like your music and they're going to give you a templated agreement that they want you to come into. Right. Their business model. Right. right. But look, my, my goal right now is to let these artists know labels aren't always right. No. Hell no. So. No. It's like, it's honestly, it's like a... It's clockwork, bro. It's like it's like they find an artist, they'll pick an artist, they'll yo, come in, they do a little research on the artist, they'll have the artist come in, you know, they'll everybody at the table will make it seem like they've been rocking with this artist for so long, you know, this that every like everybody's in on this fucking cruel, fucked up, you know, uh, twenty people in the room, thirty <laughs> people in the room. It's scam, pretty <laughs> right. much. Everyone's in on it. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, I swear it's like a scam. You know, I'm fucking get you in the room. Yo, we've been rocking your shit rocking since uh, February. When did you drop? Yo, March, that, right? That record that you just dropped last week, that shit's crazy. And what about the song you did two years ago? And you're like, oh shit, you really are paying attention, right? You like sitting there like, damn, these niggas really do. These niggas really do love me, right? Right. <laughs> these niggas really probably do. don't even know the words to the song. They don't even know the words. They just was hit right before you walked in. Like, yo, yo, mention the song from two years ago. Happy birthday. Tell them that you like. Did they right. research on the right. spot? So right. I'm sitting there like these niggas is like, yo, that happy birthday shit. I'm like, yo, true. They listen to happy birthday. <laughs> he hype as hell. Yeah, well, hype. His dream was to be signed to my a label. Nigga, I, my, my dream is that. You feel right. me? Since I'm a little nigga. So I'm getting, you know, I'm like, damn, yo, true. They paying attention, nigga. Like, yeah, yo, hey, we seen your video, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yo, you doing big shit, you know what I'm saying? Da, 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 da. Right. That picture you just posted, like, I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's a whole fucking sham, bro. It's a right. whole sham. Right. You don't realize it, though. You in there, and then they, you know what I'm saying? They start talking millions of dollars, even if it's one million. When you coming from the, from the, from the block, when you coming from the hood, you coming from nothing, mm -hmm. and somebody say a million dollars, that shit at the time, that shit sound like a billion dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. Like what? You, you know what I'm saying? You talking to a nigga who, to work, with Wendy's and you know a little odd jobs and sell crack with eight balls and fucking trying to make a little hustle a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And then right. you talking about a million dollars. The only time you ever heard a million dollars was on TV. Tell right. me. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what that is, but you think you just think it's a lot of money. When they throw that shit, you know what I'm saying, in your face, Paul. If you don't have it, it you, is. <laughs> right. It's a lot of money. Right. That's a lot of money. All I think about is my mom. I'm trying to retire my mom. That's mm -hmm. a big goal. Now, the, right. bi the big you thing about saying? music is yeah. at the time where we're taking these label meetings, we're generating about 10000 yeah. a month, mm -hmm. right? But it's like, it's delayed, right? Like, you put out something... You, it's a delayed process to getting paid and right, all of that. Right. So the 10,000 took like two years, three years to get it to that point. Mm -hmm. And we've, we haven't seen the unseen yet, right. which is, can you get to 100? Right. Can you get to 200,000? So the label is sitting there <laughs> yeah. like, can no, you get it through? We don't know. We, got the machine. Mm -hmm. we just got it started. We, we got 10. Get you right. to the, Here's the sham, right? So I'm they like, come in and I'm they're like, selling us that. I'm like, right? <laughs> I'm like, am I going to get to where? <laughs> Am I gonna get to work with Bruno? Right? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> what about Cardi? Anything you Anything want. Anything you want, right? All that right, shit, yeah, right? right? All the top. <laughs> yeah. Then they walk you through the fucking building. You got all these niggas on a fucking on these big ass pictures. It's like a show. Them. It's like a museum. It's like a museum. Right. <laughs> you see all the hottest. The artifacts. Popping, the artifacts. <laughs> da, 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 da. And then when you walking down that hall, they got at the end. They got a picture of you, and they said, "Look." This could be you right here. This could be you here at the label, you feel me? All we missing is you. Right. Is you. They stick you right next Crazy. to motherfucking Ed Sheeran. Mm -hmm. And they say, look, that's Ed Sheeran right there, right next to you. You want to work with Ed Sheeran? 
I'm like, I do want to work with Kanye. Let me, let me <laughs> <laughs> you start rethinking your life. Like, wait right. a minute. I do like I do want to work with Ed This Jane. might be it. Mm-hmm. This might be it. You see what we did for for Meek. You see what we did, right? And it's it's a big sham, nigga. And you like, damn. So yeah, I'm not gonna play the rest of the video. We already a couple minutes in, but he's basically laying out the courting process that these labels go through when they want you to sign. They tell you anything that th- that you want to hear. They basically bring you in. Tell you how much they love you. Ain't really heard your shit. They just know that you hot. Somebody might have brought you, set the olive branch for them to give you a basic offer, basic template. And from there, the objective is to convince you that they really fuck with you because every artist nowadays, you know, they always say their decision is based on, oh, you know, I felt like I went with who believed in me the most. I felt like, you know what I mean? So the the goal is to convince you that they believe in you the most, right? He fell for it. He fell for the trap. He ended up signing with these folks. Um, and he only got a hundred thousand dollars up front. We I already told y'all what he did with that money. He gave half of it to his mother. So he only had the other, other half after taxes in his pocket, got no more money from the label. Um, then Joyner ended up putting a project out and going on tour which he self-funded the tour. He didn't even get the money from the label for the tour because they didn't believe in him going out and touring. He got an actual, uh, he got sponsorships to cover a portion of the tour, right? Which they got about $60,000. I think it cost it damn near a hundred for them to go out and make it happen. So they only had close to half the money. And as they're taking the money to go from city to city, state to state, then they have to go to the label to reimburse them for the money. So it was kind of pointless for him to be with them in the first place. This is the type of stuff that artists are going through behind the scenes. And this is why I also say I feel like Doja Cat has gone through a lot that we don't know, because I would not be surprised if she's dealt with a lot of the same type shit. So basically, they're taking loans out and all this different shit creating overhead, creating new overhead because you're already in the hole with the label. Once they give you money, they set aside a million dollar budget or whatever the case may be. You start tacking on extra um, debt with other people because now you got to stay afloat and put things into the into play. Joyner takes 20000 out of his own pocket from the money he made from the label to go towards that 100000 margin. So they get to eighty, And now they're trying to get the label to pay them back, which takes a long time. Labels don't pay you back immediately. We talked about that with uh, Priority AP, how labels put you on net 30, 60, 90. It takes months before they actually send you a check. Even at my level, when I'm working with publishers and I give them a song, these niggas take damn near a month or two to pay me for the shit that I'm doing, which is why I'm leaning further into YouTube because I'm like, man, I cannot keep having money just sitting around waiting for it to hit my account. These niggas don't give two shits about you, man. They want you for your music. They want you for your IP. They want you for your, you know, your marketing, your marketability. But ultimately, they don't give two fucks about your well-being, you know, your family, your ability to take care of said family. They see you as a cog in the system, as a motherfucking, uh, you know, a wheel on the vehicle, so to speak. And if your tire goes flat, they're going to put another one right on that motherfucker and keep that shit moving so shout out to join lucas for exposing some of this you can check out the rest of the interview is being released in pieces on math half is my expert opinion um you could probably wait it out about a week or two and get the whole thing but you know like i said they're releasing it in pieces which means it's going to take a long time for the full thing to go up but shout out to joiner i've expressed my opinion of him i've expressed my support for him and just the amount of innovation that he's bringing to the game i respect him a lot some people say he's whack that's your opinion. But much love and respect to him. All right. That's my show for the Let's Talk. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Um, be sure to like and share this video. Let me know what y'all think down below in the comments. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Become an insider. You know what I'm saying? And I will see y'all on the next one. All right. Much love and respect. Peace. King of my city and call the Coming, I swing like soldier rag. Leading my people like quarterback. Why I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Spinning the block for the gooder, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. 
We don't do beef on computers, so straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Yeah. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. Uh -huh. No map, I trust my gut for the quest, but drama I'm full of your breast. Yeah. I was ready for years and they doubted me. Uh -huh. All of a sudden they tell me they proud of me. Yeah. I been dropping these haters like calories. Uh -huh. Cross them out, I came back with some batteries. Stand for my honor, but you run no counter. Packing a stick with a drum. Wanna catch my bad one fumble. I done came too far to be humble.